Hey guys, what's up everyone? I hope you're having a really good day and I hope you're having a great time stuck in isolation. It's a bummer that we couldn't get together today, but I'm hopeful and I'm looking forward to the future when we're all together again. But for now, we're gonna be doing online virtual classes and today is gonna be all about drawing. So I have a couple of my supplies I'm gonna show off and we're gonna talk about it um, when we do the overhead shot where I am actually drawing. So you'll get to see the whole thing. Um, it'll be cut into some pieces just to make it speed up a little bit, but feel free to pause and start whenever you feel comfortable to go on to the next segment. This is how I draw. And I showed you guys a little bit of it uh, when we were together in person, but I just wrapped my finger around it like that and then I do that. Now, if you have physical limitations, there are multiple ways you could hold it. This is what is best for me because I have control and more of a steady hand with my like fine lines. And um, this is what I found easiest. Now you do have to be careful that you don't get any pressure points, but it is possible. Now you might see this weird material. That's because I have a service dog that will pick up my pens and pencils if I need it. And she, I dropped this one so many times that her teeth marks put some holes and I didn't want to get a splinter. But then I realized that it gives more of um, friction for your hand. So if you don't have any grasp, um, such as myself, I don't have a grasp in my hand. I can't pinch anything. Um, it helps with the friction too. So that's another technique you can do to adapt to drawing. You might find this cuff called the universal cuff helpful for your drawing. If you have hand impairments, you wrap it around your hand and then stick the utensil through the sleeve. And this should help give you more control as well. And you can find these anywhere online. Just search universal cuff. You should be able to find multiple variations. When you are shading and creating more um, creating depth in your drawing. You can use these paper blenders. If you don't have this, you can use a paintbrush or your finger or a tissue. With the tissue, you can just wrap it around your finger and then blend it with your finger. Um, and then with a paintbrush, you just can blend it as well. And then one more thing is that you can use whatever eraser. If you have an eraser on the back of your pencil, I have an eraser that looks, I mean, get it like this and it has more control for me and it's easier to use. It's just in this shape and you can make it um, stick out more or retract it so not as, there's not so much racer showing, but it's really great and easy. And then for paper, I like to use sketchbooks. Today I used just regular printer paper because I know everyone is at home. So um, if you need material, then you can use whatever pencil you have. I have artist pencils some of the lead has different weight and you can use a regular pencil it just depends on what kind of pressure you're applying so be careful if it's a lighter area don't push as much if it's a darker area obviously push harder if you have impairments in your hands you can also check out this mouth stick that you use literally with your mouth and you are able to control the paintbrush or pencil just by moving your head here are some tray table options that can wrap around the armrests or go straight on top of your lap that are really useful. In this video, you will see me using my desk to draw on, but I also use a tray table. Another device I love using, especially if I'm painting, is an easel. These easels go right on top of your table or tray, so you do not need to worry about standing in front of it if that is difficult for you to do. So these are great options to help make art more accessible for you. So let's get more to it on the overhead camera. Feel free to take a picture of these steps that you can reference to as you draw. The first step about drawing is thinking what you want to draw. What is your inspiration? Is it nature? Is it wildlife? Is it a portrait of your grandma or your niece or nephew or your family? For me, I like to browse the internet and get reference photos. Today, I thought it would be easy to show how I can draw a tulip. They're pretty simple flowers, but it involves a lot of shading and detail. Our second step is to think what our composition is going to be. Now to think 
your composition. How big do I want this tulip to cover? You can draw whatever you want, but today I'm going to do a tulip. How much space do I want to take? Do I want there to be negative space? Negative space means where there it's empty. And how big do I want the flower? Do I want it in a vase? So think of your composition. The next step is when you have your inspiration, analyze the shapes that you're looking at. This is an image I pulled from Google. The cool thing about using reference photos is that you're not completely copying it, but to understand what you're looking at helps, especially with detail. So I'm gonna focus on this flower right here, and here's the stem. Before you start drawing, you wanna look at your shapes. Yes, this is a petal, but I'm not looking at a petal. I'm looking at an oval with a weird end. I'm looking at this huge oval that encompasses the entire bud of the flower, and then you have your stem. So when I draw first, I'm going to make guidelines. So I'm going to draw this big circle. This circle, this line, will not be a permanent line. This is just to help keep the proportions and shapes. So when we draw our shapes, now we're going to start sketching a little bit more specific. After I draw this oval, I'm going to draw the petal and then add more and more detail. Before I start adding more specific detail, I'm going to erase the guides. Then I'm going to add texture, add more detail if it needs it. If you're doing something extremely complicated, say a portrait, and you're having a hard time keeping it as close to your model as possible, when I do my projects, I also think about framing. A lot of frames you can get that are 8 inches by 10 inches. So what I'm first going to do is mark off about 1 inch. So that will be 8 by 10 on a computer printed paper. If you're having troubles with your proportions, you can draw a grid to help create your composition. So what you'll do is at every inch, you're going to draw vertical and horizontal lines. And it looks like this. And then you're also going to draw the grid on your reference photo or wherever you're getting inspiration from so that you can keep the proportions the same. What you're going to do is you're going to draw the same square that you see on your reference photo on the same square of your composition. So we're going to draw the oval to get our guideline. And so you want to draw really light because you will erase these most likely. And we have petals. And then we're going to draw the stem. The stem is a little easier. It's more like a thin rectangle. So here are our shapes that we used our guidelines to create. Now we're going to sketch more specifically. We drew these lines pretty light and then we did them a little harder so there's more definition. I do recommend erasing the guidelines before you start this part. I'm shading and I'm keeping it lighter. I'm keeping the areas where there's more shadows. I'm keeping that area darker. Then I'm going to blend it all in and add more texture. So I said the lights are just coming in this way. I'm actually going to have it come in this way which means this petal will be slightly darker the back side because of the shadow. Okay. Now I'm going to get a darker pencil. So I'm switching out 2H for 4H. Now it's definitely darker at the bottom.
This is darker, not totally on the edge, but close to it. Now I'm going to blend it out. Blend it out using my paintbrush and this is going to take away some of that grain. And that's just going to buff out. But stay in your lines. This side. Alright, see how smooth, much smoother that looks? Time to add more shading. You want to shade in the shape, your flower, whatever object you're drawing, in the same motion. All right, and there's a pretty harsh shadow right there. So that line can be thicker, and then we're gonna diffuse it a little bit. It's okay if you need to stop and take a break. Sometimes it can be physically hard for me, depending on my posture. Remember, if you shade in circles, it's going to blend out a whole lot easier than lines. darker lines in this shadow. And now fill it in. Like that. But now, we have to make it much, much, much darker. Shade towards the edges. It's getting there, not too shabby. All right, that's looking a little better. blend it in a little bit and see where we are at. A little bit more shading. And then, let's shade the petals in the back. Thank you. 
think we light spores. So there's a little bit more definition. We're gonna keep that real dark on the edge. And then buff it out some. Now we're going to add more details of it, if that was possible, but it is, I promise. Now let's add highlights. You can use any eraser. Now I'm going to add the veins in the petals with my eraser. And this will give it more texture. And there are definitely highlights on this petal. bottom is very, very, very dark, where the petals are meeting. If you have your paper blending tool, you can use that. And then there's this line going up it.
have it in it. Add more detail to the stem. And now clean everything up. And there you go. Here is a quick and simple drawing of a tulip. Now let's refresh our steps and the process that we took. First we had made guidelines. We made a rounded rectangle, a long oval. Inside that we made the petals and mapped that out and then we added more specific lines. We erased the guides. We added texture, we added value. And then we did the final finishing touches. All right, well, I hope you guys had a successful drawing. I'm so bummed that we couldn't do this in person, but we will be together again eventually, right? So let's stay optimistic, keep drawing. I hope these tricks and techniques helped you adapt to drawing, and I'll see you next time.